Stan Gibalisco here. I would like to talk a little bit more <clears throat> about resonance, the phenomenon of resonance, discussed in my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. Uh, all editions discuss this phenomenon. However, I have the fifth edition before me right now, and I would recommend that you get a hold of this book if you don't have it uh, so that you'll know what I'm talking about and so you can teach yourself electricity and electronics. If you get the fifth edition or if it's later on now there may be future editions sixth or later but fifth edition right now as of the time of this video August 2013 has explanations for all of the chapter ending quiz answers on the internet at my website sciencewriter.net that is sciencewriter.net you just go and look at the quiz explanations link on sciencewriter.net and you'll find this and a lot of other books with web-based uh, explanations for all of the chapter ending quiz answers and also videos that explain the answers to the final exams in several of my books including this one. On page 298 in chapter 17 I discuss various types of resonant devices. What you see here on the left <coughs> is a piezoelectric crystal, also known as a quartz crystal. If you're a ham radio operator, quartz crystal, that's exactly what it is. It's a piece of quartz with two metal plates on either side, a wafer of quartz, uh, if you're a, a ham radio operator as old as I am, you probably remember the day when, when you got your novice class license. You had to use crystal control for your transmitter frequency. And you had these little crystals came in metal packages or in some cases plastic packages screwed together. They were roughly the size of, oh, maybe now a, what do you call a thumb drive or a flash drive, computer drive. They were about that size, and you plugged them in. They were two little prongs on them. You plugged them in to your transmitter. And the way that it works, they still use crystals to control certain types of electronic equipment frequencies, but you don't plug them in and out anymore. Uh, you, you, they're generally out of sight, hidden inside of the equipment. But a uh, very thin piece of quartz with two metal plates. You apply a controlled current to that uh, little wafer there by ap applying a voltage across it, like kind of like a capacitor, except instead of a dielectric, you have this quartz crystal in here. And that stresses that crystal, and the stress literally creates uh, sound waves or acoustic waves in that crystal that resonate. And the resonation frequency or resonance frequency depends upon how thick this crystal is so that as the energy bounces back and forth in there, it reinforces itself at certain frequencies generally measured in megahertz like for example I use my very first crystal my very first um, piezoelectric crystal frequency was 7.185 megahertz to this day I remember that frequency it, I plugged that little crystal in to my Viking adventurer Johnson, E.F. Johnson Company made a transmitter called the Viking Adventurer, 50 watts input. And I plugged that thing in there and eventually made a contact on this frequency, which is known as the, it resides within the 40 meter 
amateur radio band at that time that was the novice band was 7.150 to 7.20 megahertz and I eventually made a contact and my first contact from Rochester Minnesota was to a town called Zeeland Michigan Zeeland Michigan and I just thought that was the coolest thing but anyway it was a crystal controlled transmitter now I also had another crystal at 7.035 megahertz that for some reason it just came with the transmitter when I bought it used but that was outside of the novice band so I couldn't use that until I got my general class license then I could and I enjoyed that frequency as well and then I realized that the third harmonic of this frequency would lie within the 15 meter amateur radio band in fact it lay within the novice band in the 15 meter uh, portion of the spectrum let's just look at the third harmonic 7.035 times 3 equals 21.105 that is the frequency at the third harmonic of this and it would actually I could tune the transmitter to 21.105 megahertz the third harmonic and get it to work and the 40 meter antenna which I'll talk about in a second also worked resonated on the third harmonic so I sent a CQ which means calling 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 anybody want to answer me and someone in Canada came back to me and I just freaked out now this was in Ontario and it wasn't really that far away but to me that was just the the coolest thing since Big Island Bakery sourdough rye bread well that was long before I even knew about Big Island Bakery sourdough rye bread but that's for another story anyway these quartz crystals will resonate they are mechanical resonate resonating devices very much like sound waves except at a much higher frequency and they will also work at all harmonics of their fundamental frequency so the fundamental frequency of my original crystal was seven point what did I say seventy one eighty five seven point one eight five megahertz and then I also had another one at uh, 7.035 megahertz. And uh, <clears throat> it worked at the third harmonic, like I said. It would have also worked at the second harmonic and put me on the band at 14.070 megahertz. But I couldn't use that frequency until I got my general class license. But I did once I got that, and it worked on the second harmonic as well. So crystals will resonate not only at their fundamental frequency, but also at all of the harmonics. <clears throat> now, he, uh, over here on the right, we see a half-wave dipole antenna. That is also a resonant device. And what you see, this blue d dashed line here, is the distribution of current, of radio frequency current, along a one-half wavelength long dipole antenna. Notice the current reaches a maximum in the center and a minimum at the ends, and it presents a purely resistive impedance at the center theoretically in free space about 73 ohms of purely resistive impedance now when I, this at 40 meters on the 40 meter band the length of this antenna was approximately 66 feet or uh, what would that be 22 yards or roughly 20 meters half of 40 meters a half wavelength antenna and it would resonate 
and that was its fundamental resonant frequency. Now when I operated that antenna on the third harmonic using this quartz crystal at 7185 kilohertz or 7.185 megahertz third harmonic what I got was a current distribution which would look like this except let's just duplicate that put it over here duplicate that again turn it upside down and that was the current distribution on 21.105 megahertz of the third harmonic notice once again maximum current in the center minimum current at the ends. There are a couple of other current minima here known as nodes and a couple of other maxima over here. But this is where the transmission line comes down at this current maximum and this antenna worked uh, on 15 meters or 21 megahertz third harmonic just about as well as it did on its fundamental frequency. Just about the same radiation resistance here. A little, not quite the same but in the same ball park. Okay, well now on the 20 meter band there would be a significant difference uh, in the distribution of the <coughs> current and the voltage on the on the antenna. But when I got my general class license uh, I could have used the antenna like this now this is the second harmonic and this is the way that the current gets distributed on the second harmonic. It's resonant once again on 14.07 megahertz. It would also be resonant but you would find a current minimum at the center and uh, with a coaxial transmission line 50 ohm coaxial transmission line as I had that wouldn't work very well. I would have needed as is shown schematically here a parallel wire open wire line and that would work uh, but again you would get resonance here so antennas just like crystals are resonant on a certain fundamental frequency and all harmonics of that fundamental frequency so if you have a crystal say at a frequency of 7.035 megahertz then you can use that in your crystal controlled Viking Adventure transmitter at 7.035 megahertz with a 66 foot dipole you could also use it if you had open wire line actually you can you don't even have to have resonance theoretically but you could use it on this frequency now the the antennas resonate with diff slightly different properties at alternating harmonics at all of the odd numbered harmonics of the fundamental frequency you'll get a low uh, purely resistive impedance at the center at all even numbered harmonics you will get a high but nevertheless purely resistive impedance at the center so that's a little more discussion about resonant devices and you will find a discussion of those devices and some others starting on page 298 of the fifth edition of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. So with that I'll say so long. I have talked long enough. Uh, enjoy the book and if you have any comments you can email me through my website as well. Stan Jibalisco, signing off.